Julian Lane led the West Green Buffaloes to a playoff appearance in the gridiron this past season, in large part because of the 20 touchdowns that he scored on offense alone. And as a defensive back, he seemed to be uh, very adept, certainly was a thorn in the side of Unicoi County, really turned their season around. They were 5-3 and three when they met West Green. Because of Julian Lane, they would go into, in large part, a three-game losing streak to end the season, and thus denying Unicoi County their first winning record in 21 years. Uh, still, Julian Lane, for my money, was the best player that I saw the Blue Devils play this year. He just committed to go to East Tennessee State. We've got him online right now during his lunch hour. Julian Lane, a pleasure to talk to you and make your acquaintance. I'm Marky e. Bilson on Tri-City Sports Now. First question is obvious. Why ETSU? Um, well, it's a place I just named like home. It's close to my house. Um, Well, I know that wasn't the only D1 program that was looking at you. In fact, when I spoke with your coach during the regular season, he told me, yeah, uh, Lane is looking at another Southern Conference school. Who are some of the other schools, especially those in the SOCON, that were looking at you and may have offered you scholarships? Um, I had a few Division ones looking at me, but not many really offered, but uh, only the offer Division one, I thought I got was Morehead State. And, mm -hmm. and they're not a scholarship. They're not a scholarship program, are they? No, it's only academic. Yes, I know. They uh, Wayne Andrews used to be uh, the. He was one of the actual players to drop football years ago at ETSU. Became the uh, president of Morehead State later on, and I know that a lot of people uh, were concerned he might become the next ETSU president, and so football wouldn't be reenacted, but it what he was not, and uh, football is back at ETSU, and Julian Lane of West Green is going to play for the Buccaneers. Well, I know you said you had gotten uh, some interest, but only more had stated really said, do you want to come here other than ETSU, but you're now saying there wasn't any offer from a Furman or any other Southern Conference there school? Was, uh... Okay, well, that's understanding. Was it a case when Randy Sanders got the job that they really stepped up in their recruitment of you? Um, no, I, uh, I told you Taylor from ETSU was the one that uh, contacted me my junior year. Okay. He's just been talking to me ever since, believing in me. And so now he, he basically gave me a chance to come play and show him what I can do. Billy Taylor, who played at e football at ETSU in the 80s and longtime defensive coordinator, certainly has been the D.C. since ETSU uh, brought back football. Actually, the second guest we ever had, Julian Lane, on this show and uh, also was the defensive coordinator under Paul Hamilton uh, at the end of the first inclination of ETSU football as well. Uh you know, you had a great year with West Green this past year. Like I said, I, it seemed like every time you got the ball, you were doing something big. Uh, and I was impressed uh, with your abilities as a defensive back as much as a skilled player. Where is ETSU telling you that you are going to play uh, once you become a Buccaneer? Um, I believe it's going to be a defensive back. ETSU really struggled in the secondary this year. Did Billy Taylor offer you, uh, say anything of it? You might have a chance to start in your freshman year? Um, up there in ETSU, you got, you got iron everything. And that's something I like about it. But I'm not going in there for knowing I start anything. I'm going to go in there wanting to iron that start. So nothing promised to you, but uh, certainly a pathway. What with the secondary deficiencies of the Bucks this past year, 
Uh, I gotta ask, Julian, you're from the area, you're from Greenville, and it isn't that long ago that ETSU brought back football. I mean, let's face it, uh, they uh, were still, they didn't have a program when you were a freshman at West Green, and uh, it wasn't brought back officially. The announcement was made when you were in, uh, well, middle school. So what do you remember? Uh, do you remember when it was announced that ETSU would revive football? And that was the first year that they started playing again. Yeah. So that makes sense, yes. I mean, and I understand that and such. Uh, and let's face it, a lot of times when you're in middle school or whatever, when you're watching sports, you're watching the NFL or you're watching major college football instead of uh, the Southern Conference. I get that here, Julian Lane. Let me ask, uh, what, was you what did you think your season highlight was this past year when you had that outstanding season 20 offensive touchdowns for the West Green Buffaloes. What was your individual uh, highlight that you recall from your senior year in, in high school? Um, I was in the game against South Green, our six-time rival. Sure. And they was driving down the ball, they threw it deep, and I just went up and kicked it, took it back for a touchdown, and just ended up winning the game 35-21. So that's the game. And like us. I mean, I saw him old and I have little ones. And I was impressed with your abilities as a defensive back. Certainly, I can remember you picking up Brock Thompson, Unicoi County, uh, just, you know, an outstanding defensive back. I believe you had six interceptions on the season, if uh, memory serves. I'm going from memory. Is is my memory correct, six interceptions this year? Six or seven. It's been a while for me, too. We'll say a half dozen. How about that? We'll go with that. Roughly a half dozen for Julian Lane at West Green, who's going to ETSU and decided to go there ahead of uh, Moorhead State yeah, out of the Pioneer League, which means that uh, he's going to get money, or I should say a scholarship, to play at ETSU, uh, whereas Moorhead State is non-scholarship, although I guess back in the day when Phil Sims played for them, they were. But uh, back in the 90s or so, they went the non-scholarship route. Anyway, uh, just uh, some final notes here, Julian. Uh, you, I uh, wanted to say, what are you looking forward to? You said you weren't guaranteed any starting position, and you know you were like, oh, I'll have to earn a spot and such. But uh, is the plan initially for you to redshirt, or do you, like I said, do you think you can earn a spot on the field in your freshman year? Um, I believe I can earn a spot. It's just going to take a lot of hard work, and I'm going to do all that for them. Uh, starting spot or playing time. But my goal going to ETSU is everybody's goal is to win a championship. I believe I could probably do that with them. Now, this is a program that's 11 and 22. So, what makes you think that you can win a Southern Conference championship at ETSU? You said that, yeah. You said that Billy Taylor was the one that recruited you. What are your? Uh, he's going to be your defensive coordinator. So thoughts on Billy Taylor? What? Uh, how does he strike you as? Very smart man. Uh, somebody I would not want to make mad. <laughs> but hey, he's a very smart man. He's been around for such a long time. You can just see it how passionate he is. You just look at him, you just know he's all about football. He loves the game in and out. And during your recruiting process, you said that Billy had uh, spoken to you first in your junior year when Carl Torbush was still the head coach. Uh, have you met Randy Sanders? I met Randy Sanders uh, this past weekend. So it was the first time right there. Had you ever met Carl Torbush before? I met him uh, on a football uh, camp, doing like skill camp and stuff like that. Okay. So as Taylor was the primary one, but are there any perceptions that you get of Sanders against uh, Torbush? In other words, what, when you think of those two uh, coaches, I mean, certainly Torbush on the way out, Sanders on the way in, but differences, uh, Julian Lane, what what are the differences that come to mind uh, in those two head coaches uh, from your past meetings with them? Um, I don't really know much about them. Okay, uh, yeah, it's only uh, one. 
So it's only yeah. one time yeah, that you met them, so I get that. Now, but. All right. But are there any per, uh, perceptions that you had of Sanders? Um, just with my meetings I've been with him, I feel like he loves the game and like he wants to win as well. And uh, he's smart. Like, you can just tell he's very smart. Funny. <laughs> uh, he's a player coach. First and foremost, a player coach. And he expects us to be a man more than anything. And I could just see that in him. So I'm, li I'm liking the funny. Because if there was one, th you know, th that uh, to have humor coming back and, uh, you know, historically, I know that uh, there have been some coaches. Certainly Mike Cavan was very charismatic uh, uh, back in the 90s. And uh, even uh, Don Riley, perhaps uh, unintentionally, was looked at as a possibly funny coach. But nevertheless, the humor back, perhaps. For Randy Sanders. I think that's a good thing. I think it's a good thing that Julian Lane is going to be going to ETSU. I like his talents at West Green. And you know what? ETSU needs defensive backs. Julian Lane, thank you very much for uh, coming to with coming on the show. Tri-City Sports Now. Julian, if you want to have the uh, interview archive, go to our 1420 NBC Sports Radio Tri-Cities Facebook page, and uh, you'll be able to see this interview on our video section, and you can tweet it out or uh, share it with all your friends on Facebook as well. Tri-City Sports Now. Coming back, some uh, talk about the Super Bowl when we return. Oh, you're most welcome. Hey, with GMC, it means trust.